You know, the standard Wii probably doesn't need much introduction for anyone at this point. It came out in 2006 and was a complete different take on gaming from Nintendo compared to what they had been doing with the Nintendo 64 and the GameCube. This was Nintendo at their most creative when everyone was going towards like HD connections and ridiculous visuals. Nintendo said, hey, what if we had something that looks like a TV remote and it was all motion control based? Well, it worked out for them. The, the Wii went on to sell over a hundred million units, but we did have revisions of the Wii. In fact, there are, there's one that really just doesn't get talked about. And I think a lot of it has to do with one particular feature being taken away. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. Now the Wii I'm referring to is this one here. It came in a couple of different variations. They had black, blue, I think they had a pink one even as well. And the idea from Nintendo standpoint was to make this system cheaper. And the way you make things cheaper is by removing parts of the hardware and different feature sets. Now, the original Wii, when it released, was fully backwards compatible with GameCube games. You would pop them in, it had slots on the top for the controllers with your GameCube, as well as the memory cards, and you were off and running. But after a couple of years, Nintendo was looking to lower the price even further. Originally, they had dropped it $50 down to $200. And then in 2011, about five years after the system released, they went ahead and put out the family system that dropped it down to $150. In fact, it even bundled in new Super Mario Bros. Wii, if I'm remembering correctly, which was actually a pretty good price at the time. I mean, if you think about how in demand the Wii was for like the first four years it was out, then you all of a sudden, you find the Wii at $150 with Mario. And it, I mean, yeah, a lot of people are gonna grab that off the shelf as fast as they can. And that's kind of Nintendo's plan there was instead of maybe revise the Wii to do more, technically they made it do less, but at a lower cost. Now we are gonna come back to this, uh, this original launch Wii because I will need one thing out of it. But first let's take a look around the family system. And the first thing you're gonna notice here is the top where we had the openings. There you can kind of pop these flaps up, plug your controllers in, no longer the case. Instead, they just have one piece of plastic covering it along with a couple of stickers here, these covering up some screws. The other big difference we had is Nintendo wanted you to sit this down horizontally, which I, I guess it was in this vertical standing because they had the GameCube ports at the top and they sort of wanted this to kind of hang off the side and then have your controllers at the top there. In this case though, because they didn't have those troller ports anymore, they changed the text on the front. So we have power reset, Wii and eject all kind of going underneath of the disk drive to say, hey, you want to drop it down and lay it on its side. I'm sure that price difference helped Nintendo quite a bit at the time. I mean, $150 with a Mario game, this is probably very compelling to a lot of families at like Christmas time, for example, but it actually hurt the system down the road because we would have to check for this like right away when someone would bring in a Wii. And if it was a system that didn't support GameCube games, I already knew it was gonna be a lot harder to sell it because people would come in specifically looking for like earlier versions of the Wii so they could have that GameCube compatibility. I mean, think about it, you get two systems then rather than just the one. So you may remember I did that, uh, that GameCube handheld that I was trying to build out. And uh, I ran into a couple snags, but it's sort of on the, on the back burner right now. But I did have GameCube games booting and all of this, and I was gonna probably get to a point where I had Wii as well, but because this system runs on a smaller fabrication at 65 nanometers, it actually gets better battery life than uh, what, for example, a launch Wii would, and you don't lose GameCube compatibility because you're wiring the controls directly to the board and then modifying it. When you do modify these systems through soft mods, it does open up GameCube compatibility. So the way this works, at least what I've been told is Nintendo, they removed the ability for the drive to take in smaller DVDs like what we have with the GameCube. And that was kind of it. They also obviously removed the ports at the top here, but essentially if you put one of the older drives in, it'll still read the GameCube games, which I'll admit, does sound very much like Nintendo, but they were trying to cut costs any way they could with the Wii to continue getting that price down. So my plan here, we're taking this apart. We'll go ahead and drop the other 
uh, the older Wii Drive in just to see if that is the case. I've worked on these different revisions many, many times for the Wii. And a lot of times there were issues with like kids jamming stuff into the slot loading front. So you'd have like stickers or, or, or pieces of Lego stuck in there. And when it gets stuck in there, it's uh, generally it'll jam up the drive pretty good. But I never thought to take one of the older drives and pop it in to test it. All right, I have the Wii apart here. We can see right down on top of the drive. This is the revisions drive here. I haven't moved anything up. I'm using NBA Live 06. I'm not gonna waste a really expensive GameCube game just in case it, it does something crazy to it. But you can see it isn't able to lock down with this drive for the revision. They removed any of the, basically any of the guiding arms or anything that would lock this into place. As opposed to if you take something like uh, Mario Kart here for the Wii, a full size disc, you can see it's able to take it in, drop down and then start spinning no problem. You know, the nice thing about the Wii it really is pretty easy to get in, take the drive out and replace it. You don't even have to necessarily remove the laser out of the drive. You can just outright swap these completely. Like the board underneath that's attached to this drive is not married to the motherboard. So there's just these four screws here. This guy will kind of lift up just like that. A couple of cables here. This one is the ribbon for our laser and this is our power cord. And you can see a difference here between the two. This is the revised Wii Drive. This is the launch day Wii Drive. So this should pop in and we'll test it. Okay, we pop the disc in here, sits down. There you go. We'll start reading. I'm actually gonna go ahead and plug this in so we can take a look to make sure it pops up on the menu. All right, here we go with the Wii. Hooked up now, let's pop in NBA Live 06 again. And we should see it pop up pretty quickly. That's the funniest thing, they still just left the GameCube disc there even with the revision. So even if like the, yeah, so again, it'll still read them. The problem we obviously run into is that there's no controller port at all on this system. So you can't plug in a game controller. There's no memory card slot, but What's funny about this is it looks like the ports are still there on the board itself. They could be missing a few like uh, like resistors or something there, right? To like complete the circuit. But to my understanding, from what I've seen online, it looks like you could, if you really wanted to, go about installing GameCube ports on this along with the memory card. And then you would have a Wii system, the revision, the family system that is also functional with GameCube games completely. I just don't really know why you would do that when you can buy a launch switch or save this to turn it into like a Wii portable. Considering you can tap into all the different controls on, on the board and be able to play the GameCube games with your own controller set. And because this still has the GameCube functionality, Technically, it just doesn't have the disk drive to play it. People who soft mod these systems will basically restore GameCube functionality by playing them off of hard drives or USB sticks or any of that. In fact, at this point, over a decade later, this particular Wii has become preferred by people who are modding this to become a handheld, for example, because of that 65 nanometer processor. It's just an interesting turn of events because back in the day, I had the hardest time selling these at the different stores over like the launch Wii that had the GameCube ports and now people are actively looking for these. But let me know what you guys think about the family system for the Wii, especially if you were someone who ended up with it and didn't even realize, oh, it doesn't play GameCube games. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.